Hey everyone, so I had a request to do a video on embalming an autopsied body. There really wasn't much in the prep room that I could show you, actually more than I already have in the embalming room tour video. So I figured I'd just do a quick video here um, while I was at home today and uh, get those answers back to um, the requesters. So. Uh, there's not too much in the walkthrough process um, that's different in the beginning and so I was going to just first touch on a few kind of points about um, what makes the processes different um, in terms of just for the embalmer. Um, I think embalming an autopsy body <clears throat> is a lot easier um, in some aspects and there's two key ones. Um, one, the vessels are all exposed because um, the ca chest cavity is open, the cranium is open, and so um, you can get right to the source of, of the vessels you need to get to rather than making the incisions, um, going through the fascia, trying to get to the vessels and not knowing what's going on. Everything is pretty open, um, so it does make it a lot easier, especially autopsy bodies are usually... Um, kind of extreme circumstances where they've been dead for a while or it's an accident or it's a young person um, so it definitely in those situations let's take a car accident um, where you have a huge impact on the body and a lot of times it's the death has occurred because of internal bleeding or um, just almost like a whiplash of the heart just um, things that are not major like bleeding out type situation but where the circuitry within the body has been disrupted so if that body had not been autopsied we would be injecting the embalming fluid and it not be going where we needed it to go but not knowing why because we can't really see inside to where that circuitry is messed up essentially and so with the body autopsied and, and kind of opened up we bypass where there's been that disruption usually and can go right to the right to the source where we need to put the fluid for the preservation now the second um, reason that I, I think autopsies are easier is a little more emotionally um, which you would think would be a little backwards but I personally think it's easier to disconnect from what we're doing when the person's autopsy just because um, it's a lot more medical in that aspect it's just anatomy it's it's dealing with um, just parts almost rather than this whole person that we have to cut into um, I embalmed my niece when she died she was um, young and I found that because she was autopsied it was so much easier for me to be able to do it because I, I don't know I always say I don't know if I could have done it if she hadn't been autopsied of course, I, I would have just done it because that's what I needed to do, but um, because she was autopsy, I didn't have to cut into her. I got to put her back together, and I think there was something very therapeutic in that, so it was a lot easier um, being able to kind of um, restore somebody through that autopsy um, situation, and I think that that's probably the case for a lot of people, that they get to put somebody back together and, and restore them and back to um, as much their natural state as can happen in that situation. So with an autopsy, there's a Y incision that goes from both shoulders to um, the sternum down to the um, pubic. And so it's a huge Y, as, as large as the cavity can be opened up. Um, and then there's one around the cranium from behind the ear to behind the ear. So um, all the organs inside are removed during the autopsy. So some embalmers use the word kind of canoe because it, it literally is, your body is a hollowed out kind of cavity um, inside because there's nothing in there. All of those organs are put into a bag and they're called viscera and that's um, off to the side you would take that out and set that off to the side when you begin and typically when you get a body there's a, a couple stitches holding the 
um, chest flaps and the stomach flaps closed and there's usually one or two stitches holding the um, the skull or the head skin closed and so we just take those stitches out and, and open the person up so that we can do what we need to do we would do the eye caps the mouth closure all the same way um, and then we can kind of assess the situation and see um, where we want to start first. Embalmers always attack an autopsy body differently, I think. Um, I sometimes will start injecting down the legs first, and then while they're injecting, I'll then do the eyes and the mouth closure, um, just to multitask, because that's what I do is I multitask. I can't just do one thing. I'm, I'm, I gotta be kind of doing more than, than one thing at a time. Um, but that's also the nice thing about um, an autopsy body is you can have two embalmers kind of working simultaneously. Um, one injecting, one doing um, maybe some work on the face if there's some extra work that needs to be done. And so you can have more than one person working without getting each other's way. And that's also, it's, it's really helpful um, a lot of times on an autopsy body. So um, typically you would inject the six point down each leg, down each arm, and then up both sides of the, the head. Because the circuitry in the head, when um, in, inside the head, or inside the skull, um, where the blood goes up, comes around and comes back down. So it goes up this side and then down this side once it's gone through up in your skull. And so um, that circuitry is typically broken. And so it's called the circle of Willis in there, little tidbit. Um, and that's often broken. So you do have to put fluid up both sides of the head to get di even distribution. Um, so I think it just, it, some of that um, seems like it would take a little longer but because typically the vessels are exposed and they're right there and you can get to them pretty simply then sometimes it does go go quicker. Um, we do encounter once in a while a pathologist or um, who has gone a little a little happy um, uh, kind of cut happy and so they've cut extra vessels or they've cut them way too far down and Arteries are really elastic, so if they're cut too far down, they can re, um, recede back into the tissue. And so, like an, an artery, the carotid artery, if it's cut too far, if they're pulled down and cut, it can snap back up in and we can't get to it or use it. So then we have to find ulterior methods of um, preservation. So uh, sometimes there's there's hurdles we encounter with that. Um, and sometimes it's, it's perfect. I have also had pathologists who tie a little string to each one so they're um, easily identifiable and it, it goes super quick and it's awesome to get to have that. Um, so let me see, I've got some notes. Um, the, so when they do the cranium, um, they take the brain out, like I had said, and sometimes that circle of Willis is cut. Um, so you do have to get up into there so you take the, the skin and you roll it forward so the skin will come down over here from your back of your head down it's a really odd weird sight the first couple times and you feel like you're doing something crazy but it is part of the process and it's what needs to be done so that you can do what you have to do um, but it is odd to do some of that stuff um, the first couple times so uh, a lot of times the brain is not sent back. I say a lot of times, but I've I have encountered a lot of times that the brain does not come back with the body. The brain is kept for further observation, for observation, further research, um, further testing, and a letter will come to the family that lets them know that they have retained the brain and for further studies and um, yeah. So and that will never typically come back to the family. Um, it's just disposed of. The um, so the skull is really light. Once the brain's been removed, the skull's really light, and it'll often be packed in with cotton, and um, before the skull is sutured back up, and so um, the head is really light when you move it around when you're getting somebody dressed and stuff. So it is kind of an odd feeling. Um, 
the neck also, um, the, the things in the neck, some of the tissue and some of the bone structure and vocal cords, um, some of that's all removed. Um, and so the neck is kind of empty. So a lot of times that needs to be um, packed with cotton or um, some paper towel, something to kind of absorb and also to help shape the, sh the shape of a neck. Um, I've been to funerals and visitations where an autopsy was done and they did not shape it. And so you have this really flat, weird um, thing going on and it's just not natural. So it's definitely a key thing to do is to shape the neck and add a, a Adam's apple if it's a male. So um, there is a higher chance of leaking with the body when, when there's been an autopsy because you have so many more incisions. Um, so there's a lot of extra precaution taken with extra powder that's put in that absorbs moisture, um, more suturing, glue, cotton, just, just extra layers of things that are done. A lot of times the um, person will be put in some of that plastic type um, covering, so like a plastic t-shirt type thing or um, plastic underwear or plastic pants that go under the normal clothing that will catch any of the leaking if that occurs. Um, now the viscera that I had talked about earlier, um, so all of the internal organs and then the brain if it is returned are in this plas large plastic bag. And I, I'm sure every embalmer has said at one point, I don't know how the, all of this ever fit in that person. Like it just never seems to go back once you take it out. Kind of like, you know, after a person has a baby and they're like, man, you could never put that baby back in if you needed to. It's just, you know, doesn't seem humanly possible that things fit that way. Um, so you've got this large bag of internal organs. And so uh, embalmers will take one of two positions. Um, they either treat the viscera in the bag or they will bread the viscera. So treat in the bag, typically you put in um, straight cavity fluid. Now cavity fluid was the fl is the fluid that we used the trocar to put into the cavity um, when we did the typical embalming, the non-autopsy embalming. And that fluid stays in there, treats that. Sometimes it's aspirated back out before viewing um, but it's straight fluid, you don't dilute it at all. So typically with that viscera bag, you just pour some of that in, keep it tied up, let it sit while you're embalming the body, and then um, a lot of funeral directors will go in with the aspiration hose and suck out as much fluid as they can, and then actually suck out as much air and kind of vacuum pack in that viscera as tight as they can because that helps you to fit it back in the cavity of the person. Um, then you wrap the rib cage in cotton. We do that because it's super sharp because it's been cut open. And so when you put that bag back in, you know, nightmare is to have that bag rip. And then you've got viscera and fluid and everything that was nice and dry and perfectly ready for that last step. You've got to kind of go back and, and clean up and retreat and rebag and, and everything. So um, you've got the once the viscera is back in and then you can suture up. So sometimes that viscera actually, it will not fit back in there. Um, and so that viscera in the bag will be put in the foot of the casket. Um, and so it's buried with the person. It's not trying to like be trickery or, you know, dishonest, but um, it just doesn't fit back in. So we have to kind of do what we can do. Um, so the cavity is filled with cotton and is packed and the viscera is put bound by the feet of the, the person in, in the casket, typically before they go to the cemetery. So it's not sitting in there during the whole visitation, but everything goes with the person. It's just um, not exactly how somebody might think it was. Um, there's also some directors will do what they call breading the viscera, where they actually take all the viscera out of the bag and make sure it's coated in a formaldehyde powder um, and put back in the body all kind of treated and coated. And so if it doesn't fit in the bag, that's kind of the next step that some people will take rather than leaving it in the bag um, in the bottom of the, in the foot end of the casket. And so there's two methods to treating the viscera. 
um, and then suturing up where the, it's a lot of a lot of sewing a lot of suturing um, especially sometimes they'll do um, I've only had a couple where they actually do a spinal incision as well so that they can um, take out the part of the spine um, I've seen this in uh, one case where somebody was walking down the side of the road and was hit in the rear by a vehicle and was killed and so they did some rear autopsy incisions to um, look at the bruising, look at the damage that was done on the back side of the person as well. Um, always creates uh, a lot more sewing for the embalmer but also a lot of leaking when the person's laying on their back and there's incisions back there, a lot more leaking can happen. So just a lot of extra precaution has to be taken um, for the viewing. So, um, a few, I guess, downfalls. Uh, I think I, my personal opinion from what I've seen, I think bodies dry out a lot faster um, just because they've usually been in cold storage at the um, medical examiner's office or at the hospital, and so um, there's a lot of that cold air circulating around the body, and so they, they just tend to dry out a little bit more and I think they also decompose a little faster because of that and so uh, they often turn um, a little grayer um, have a distinct smell to them when somebody's been autopsied so I can always tell if I go to a visitation I can always tell if the person's been autopsied because of just their color and stuff and that's just because I I know that visual um, yeah but basically they're they're the same in, in some aspects and, and just structurally it's different. So hopefully this answered some questions. Um, I am always open to qu answering questions. I'm as brutally honest without uh, try, you know being uh, having shock value. I don't I'm, I'm not here to sensationalize what I do or what funeral directors and embalmers do and um, I, I love to talk about the business and educate people. So, Give me more questions if you have them. Thanks, guys.